This video is going to demonstrate how to solve for unknowns in F tables as well as how to fill out F tables using output from SPSS. It will do this for a one way between subjects, one way within subjects, and a between subjects two way, that is a subset of factorial analysis of variance. So let's start with the first design, which is a one way between subjects ANOVA. Uh, another video I have shows you how to run all of these different tests. So these tests are simply, they've been performed. All we are going to do is work with the output to fill in F tables. So we have our first F table right here for a one way between subjects analysis of variance. And you see that we get our three sources between groups, within groups, and total. And we get our table with sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, F, and the significance, which is, of course, the p-value, which you use to retain or reject the null. From this, we can go to Excel and easily realize that this translates quite simply into the F tables that you would have to fill out for your book. So your homework has you fill out something like this. And in the one-way design, here I did use a one-way ANOVA under compare means. You see that we would just directly transfer this information into the table. So we would have our 3,410.33 rounding the two decimal places with two degrees of freedom, mean squares, and the F value are within would come from the line within groups. And our total would come from the total line. Now what you should immediately realize is that these values all relate to one another very directly. So first and foremost, let's talk about how do these values relate across the line. So the way the math works is sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom equals mean squares. So the mean squares for each of these lines is obtained by doing this division process. So that is true in the between subjects case here. That is also true for the within subjects case here. When I divide across, I get the mean squares. So that would mean if you needed to go in reverse, if I had started with a mean squares value, for example, I could multiply, and that would solve me back to sum of squares. Next, let's talk about how these things relate with uh, respect to one another or down the columns. So if you take the sum of squares, for example, the sum of squares between and the sum of squares within, if we add those together, that is going to give us the sum of squares total. The same is true with the degrees of freedom. If we add them together, 2 plus 21 gives us 23. The last form that you would solve for is solving for the F. Well, as we already said, by taking the sum of squares and dividing by the degrees of freedom, we get the mean square. And that works for both of these lines. Once you have the mean squares, you divide the between by the within mean square, and that is what gives you your F statistic. So this is how you would translate from the table in SPSS for a one way into a between subjects table for an F. And this also then talks about how you would relate them. Now a more complex version is dealing with the within subjects case. In a within subjects case, you're going to have the within being what you're accounting for. But you also have two sources of error because now we have this between persons or between subjects error term, not just the error that has to do with the differences between the conditions or time points. So we have four lines to deal with, but the structure will look the same. Now, if we look at our output here on SPSS, we're going to see that it looks a little more complex. So this is where my output starts for the repeated measures design. Now, this first table is not a table that you need to worry about for our class. We're, we're not going to worry about this multivariate test table. We can just skip right over that. So we're going to continue 
what else do we have to look at here? The test of sphericity. We said that we we're just going to assume sphericity in this class. So again, not one we're going to worry about. So we're going to keep going. We come down to the test of within subjects effects. And this is the first place that we want to pay attention. All right, so you see that we have um, our source. And this is the source that would be, for example, time. Um, it is the within subjects stuff. This is the effect that you're interested in. Now, there is an error associated with this within subjects, right? And so we get this line below. Now, we have four different options you see for each of these. Now, as we said previously, in this class, we're going to just make this assumption of sphericity. So this top row is the row you want to use. And you're going to want to use that in both cases, sphericity assumed. So we're going to use the sphericity assumed line uh, for our repeated measures ANOVAs. So these lines then would contain the information you would need to transfer over into the table. So if we look at where do we transfer this information to a table, Are within subjects accounted for is that first line that has sphericity assumed for our source that we're interested in. So we're going to look at that line to get our sum of squares. Our degrees of freedom, our mean squares, and the F value. Then we're going to look at the line that has sphericity assumed for the error term to fill out the error that would be with the within subjects factor. Now we have to figure out where do we get this between subjects, or between persons, as your book calls it, error term. So this is going to come from the box that says between subjects effects. Subjects is another term for persons. It's just kind of the scientific objective term. Of course, it's gone out of style now. We use the term participants. But this is the term here for the idea of persons. So what do we want? We want the error associated with between subjects. So We want this information right here. So we're going to take this information and put it into our table. or the between subjects line. So we have an error term, rounded to two decimal places. All right, <clears throat> so these are the sources of variability we have, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, all these things. So now the final thing we would want to do is we would want to get our total line. And we could, of course, get our total line. Um, you're not going to find this directly in SPSS in this design. There is not a single line for the total. So what do we do? Well, all of these values relate to one another in the exact same way we discussed in the previous table. So when you take the sum of squares divide by the degrees of freedom, you get the mean squares. And that's true for every one of these. And the same principle then is true that when we add down, that is going to give us um, the total line. So when we add these three sources together, we're going to get the answer we want for our total line. So we can just come to fill out our table and get the sum. of the above. And so there we would have our total for degrees of freedom and our total for sum of squares. Now the last thing you might need to deal with is a case in which you have a factorial design. In a factorial design, you're going to have multiple sources. So you'll have at least two factors. So we'll look at an example of output like that. We come down here to this univariate analysis of variance.
and this is where our analysis begins for factorial. Now in a factorial design, you're going to have the entire model. Now your book doesn't bother having you report the model, but this is the degrees of freedom for the whole thing. So these are going to be the degrees of freedom for all of your effects. So how do we know that? You can see that by adding together, you have the effect of group, the first variable and the interaction of those things, 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 5. And so that carries all the passengers. So your book, though, is going to have you just report the effects. So we're going to skip past the intercept and, and model lines, and we're going to come down to the variables and the interaction. So we're going to want to look at these, and then we're going to want to look at the error line. We're going to want to look at the corrected total line. Those are going to be the sources of interest. We're going to ignore the traditional total line. We're going to ignore the model for your book. We're going to ignore the intercept. So these are the sources that we're interested in that we want to take and translate into our table. So in a factorial design, you're going to have a factor A. So group is our first factor. We would take our sum of squares, our degrees of freedom, our mean squares, and our F value. For factor B, the variable 0, 0, 0, 1, we're going to take our sum of squares, our degrees of freedom, our mean square, and our F value. For the interaction, we're going to take our sum of squares, our mean squares, and our F value. For the error term, we take our sum of squares, our degrees of freedom, and our mean squares. And for the total, we want the corrected total line. There you go. So this is going to work to be able to solve on this table just like we did on the other ones if we take a, take a look at how these relate to one another. So like always, when we divide across, we get mean squares. And then when we're getting these F statistics, every one of these F statistics is the mean square for the factor divided by the error term. Because remember, every F test is the mean squares that you account for over the mean squares error. And so you just got to remember, well, what is it that I'm interested in my model? Because that's the stuff I'm accounting for. And then find the error term. So when you're testing the effect of factor A, you want to know what did factor A account for and divide it by the error term. When you're looking at factor B, you take what factor B accounts for and you divide it by the error term. When you're looking at the interaction, you take what it accounts for and divide it by the error term. So every one of these F tests comes from that type of process. So when I take this and divide by this, I get this. When I take this and divide by this, I get this. When I take this and divide by this, I get this. And so those are where all of our F tests come from. As you see, we can still just look at the additive effect of degrees of freedom to get our total degrees of freedom. 18 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 23. And the same is true here for sum of squares. When we add together all these sum of squares, we will get the sum of squares total. So these are how you would look at the results inside of these tables. Now, of course, once you understand these relationships, if you have some that are missing, you should just be able to use some basic algebraic manipulation to solve for any of the unknowns. Basic principles always. Sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom equals mean squares. Right? Basic principles. Summing all of the things in the tables for sum of squares in DF will always get you your total line. And finally, a mean squares for the effect that you're accounting for, what you're interested in, over a mean squared error term is always going to yield your F statistic. And in remembering these things, you'll basically be able to solve for any unknowns in the tables as long as you have just a couple pieces of information.